Hello. Uh, it's been quite a few weeks since I did my last hobby update and it's just because I've just been incredibly busy at work. There's been a, a lot going on and I haven't managed to get anywhere near as much time on painting and, and wargaming as I, as I wanted. Sad, a couple of, couple of games, um, but nowhere near <laughs> what I wanted to get done. Um, so I wanted to take the chance to do a hobby update but also do a shout out that I mentioned in the last video um, just because there's a lot of people who regularly comment on my videos and I watch a lot of other videos so I thought I'd just um, do a bit of a shout out or just you know make a list. There'll be a um, list in the description just to these guys channels and any other channels that I think are, are worth checking out because I find a lot of these painting videos are, are just good to have on when I'm painting um, listening to what, what other people are doing always gives me a bit of drive to carry on with what I'm doing so I've got, got a bit of a list I've stuck on the wall so if I keep looking up there that's <laughs> just where everyone's names are um, so as a start uh, Leon T66 uh, it's always commenting always having a bit of back and forth which is good um, I really like the sort of way he paints it all his colors and everything are really bold and he's currently working on um, some lander schnecks I think I've pronounced that right um, which is a little bit after the sort of medieval period I'm on but um, he does like his stripes and it's kind of encouraged me to now try and do some on some of my models but we'll see how that turns out um, really enjoyed looking at his Napoleonic stuff go and check it out if you haven't although I suspect most people who are watching these channels have probably already seen his videos um, but also um, check out his rules as well um, for his Napoleonic stuff uh, it's well worth well worth a look uh, another channel is Wargaming with Gary um, and he has a whole whole mixture of stuff on there um, talks about fantasy talks about the mortal realms thing that's just come out the Age of Sigma magazine which which I've got which you'll see some bits in a minute um, and um, yeah he does a uh, really good uh, videos where he goes through the comments um, and, and responds to them and in fact he responded to one of mine uh, I think today actually um, where he just wondered about the name seventh son and wondered if I was a seventh son uh, the answer is no uh, there is only I'm one of one uh, I just really like Iron Maiden and it's a it's a great Iron Maiden album seventh son seventh son and that's it <laughs> <laughs> um, boots on the table with Dom he's got got some great battle reports on there really nice stuff and um, probably the, as I say the most battle reports I watch are on that channel um, he's got some bolt action on there uh, there was a, a really good pike and shot one um, and there's some sharp practice on there that I've been watching I just finished watching on when they have a battle in some crossroads and it's really sort of piqued my interest in checking that out the skirmish of that having said that I've been just looking at the um, the new Nick starter not Kickstarter Nick starter from North Star Games for muskets and tomahawks um, they've got something on there at the moment so you you back this thing um, but it's actually been released in March so it's effectively just a pre-order um, but not like Kickstarter where you have to wait for months and then it might not come um, and the base game comes with a rule book the source book for the um, American Indian War, right? American Indian War, French Indian War, French Indian War, um, and uh, some models and some tokens. But a bit like Saga, because it's produced by Studio Tomahawk, are doing the same thing. They're going to release other source books. They're going to for skirmish gaming. So they're going to cover um, the Napoleonic period. They're going to cover American Civil War and the Anglo-Zulu War. So it's something I'm really, really interested in. So I might might look into getting into that. Um, I want basic miniature painting. Um, he's doing some great stuff in there, just Napoleonics. Um, I do do Napoleonics, even though I haven't painted any up for a while, but say in a minute, I'll show you what I have stuck together and, and that's gonna change, hopefully. Um, but it's always good, always good stuff on there. Um, BJ Kerno modeling, the same thing. Um, Napoleonics um, on there, always really nice. And he's really, really good at basing. In fact, he's done, he, he's put his um, artillery on oval bases. And they're the bases that I use for my uh, Napoleonic command bases. And I never thought that. And now I really want to go back and do them again. But the thought of having to rebase loads of artillery is kind of putting me off. But, I'm for the next, any project I do in the future where I'm going to have artillery, I might might switch to that 
So I've got some great bolt action games now. I do play bolt action, um, just not very much. Um, I sort of tend to focus on uh, Napoleonics, uh, the Wars of the Roses stuff, and um, I've been playing a lot of, sort of skirmish games and Dead Man's Hand and things like that at the moment. Uh, another channel I really like is Medieval Warrior um, for battle reports. Um, there's loads on there, and because I'm doing the Wars of the Roses, he's covered things. Um, so we've got the uh, Hundred Years War stuff on there, which is is brilliant. But he's just battled lots of different systems. So um, I was watching some of his Sword Point stuff, um, which is really interesting. But one that I'm really interested in, and I don't know if anyone's got any real experience with, which he seems to have, is Mortimer Glorium. And um, it's a system that I've been been looking at, um, but I can't seem to find out too much about it. Uh, I'm planning on using Hail Caesar for our uh, Wars of the Roses games, and then after we've played a couple of games, I dare say, dare say we're going to start sort of uh, house ruling things. So, but more to Glorium, interesting. I, I like those videos, and um, it's worth chattering out. Um, Von Ketteringham, this. Great channel, and there's just just so many models, <laughs> so many models. He's, he's a machine. He's just a painting machine. But it's inspiring. It, it, it's inspiring. It it really does push me to try and do some stuff. Hasn't worked in the last month because I've just been knackered from work. But going forwards, um, hopefully um, I'll be able to sort of crank up <laughs> what I'm doing. Um, and then um, I, can't, I always I can't pronounce this. I'm sorry if I butcher this, but uh, Grana Prigo. Um, again, more Napoleonics, which is great because when I when I got into Napoleonics, it was uh, I'd always thought about doing it, but the sheer model count put me off. It was in 2015 um, that I it was on the 200th anniversary of um, Waterloo. I had all these celebrations, and there was a competition, and I can't remember what website or Facebook page was running it, um, but the the prize was the collector's box set of the Ward of La Haisant box. So I, I entered the competition, didn't hear anything, and then two months later I got a knock on the door and this bloody great box appeared, just chocker with stuff. And, and that was it, That and hence a, a monster was created. Um, so I went from that, and then I've just been adding and adding and adding to it, and I don't think it'll ever stop. <laughs> but um, thinking about that, I should probably actually crack that out again because I think I've got enough now to actually probably do the complete La Haisant battle without having to um, sort of substitute things in. So uh, yeah, but no, Napoleonics. There should be should be more more people and seeing these videos and how many people are doing it now. I think we're slowly winning people over. Um, other channels that I watch while I'm painting or doing things. Uh, many of you know I've been doing the Lord of the Rings stuff. Uh, Zorp Zorp Gaming uh, is an amazing channel uh, for anything to do with Middle Earth. It's brilliant. Uh, terrain builds some of the some of the terrain boards. He's got this, this Pelennor Fields uh, board that he did. Um, I think it's six foot by eight foot, or maybe six by ten, and it's amazing. He's cast it's littered with um, <laughs> with dead bodies. And they've individually painted them all, and uh, there's LED effects and smoke effects. And probably not anything I'm actually ever going to do at home, but it's it's some really nice stuff to watch. He's always really, really enthusiastic. Um, and really, the last channel which I probably watch quite regularly is Kings and Generals. Uh, it's a history channel, but kind of done in a military history way. So, for example, if you're into the Wars of the Roses, they've just released an hour-long video on the history of the Wars of the Roses, starting right at the end of the Hundred Years' War and goes all the way through. And um, really looks at the political situations, really good commentary, uh, well researched and then when it comes down to key battles you get this zoom in of the battle map and key positions and key players moving around. It's, re it's really good and it's really interesting so um, you know other than that if I'm not watching any of your channels or, or listening to sort of people wrap it on about um, historical figures or historical battles um, I'll be listening to, to audiobooks and they'll, they'll range from historical things to autobiographies um, to just sci-fi, just anything at the moment. Although I have to find something long. I like a nice long audiobook. Um, 
so yeah, all of you guys, if I, if I haven't mentioned you, um, I, it's simply because I, I, I kind of go for because I looked at the channels I, I look at the most or the people who comment the most. Um, I'm sorry, but I, you know, I do try to comment back to every person who, who sends me a comment or, or gives me a like or whatever. Um, but uh, if I miss you off, I'm, I'm sorry, but um, I'm hopefully going to be a little bit more on it. Um, all right, I figured as well, to put a hobby update on the end of this, I can show you what I've been working on and what I've got coming up. And um, yeah, but before I do, because I don't think it's going to fit in the um, Zoom, I've been working on just finished sticking together this, which is a Roman bakery from uh, Cerisa. Um, and it's for Gangs of Rome, which I picked up at Salute last year. And uh, this was the centerpiece in the box set, Blood and Circuses. Um, the whole thing comes comes apart very nicely. Ooh, cool. And um, you can see inside millstones, ovens, and shop counter, um, and bowls there. So I'm going to be. I just I had this. I was looking at my box of things to paint, and I saw this. I just thought. I'm, I'm going to stick that together. Um, everyone was out. I was on my own, so I just put on a film on Netflix and, and stuck that together in about well, under an hour. So I'm going to be painting that um, very soon. So uh, I'm just going to change the camera around and I'll show you what I've been working on. Okay, so what I've been working on in sort of the spare moments that I've had. Uh, when I haven't been working. Uh, so start with, I, like a few people, I've bought the few mags of the Mortal Realms magazine, the Games Workshop, Age of Sigmar start collecting thing. I mean, they had a good de they have a good deal on there. I mean, there are packs of models that I think are worth about 20 quid and you get, I think the first issue was like three or four quid and there was about 30 quid's worth of stuff on there. Um, so I thought I'd um, just, just paint them up. Um, I'm trying to keep to a really minimal sort of colour palette and I've seen other people do, uh, they've called them stone cast eternals, they've done them as living statues and to be honest I'm not looking for anything really complicated so I thought I'll just do that. So all these colours at the back are what I'm sticking to um, for doing these. Bases will be a bit different but um, this is sort of where I am with this one. Um, so I just wanted to use really really minimal colour palette um, and I didn't want the statue to be grey um, I wanted to go with a bit more of a sort of a sandstony kind of effect so I based it with um, after spraying it black um, Mournfang brown dry brushed with Rakar flesh dry brushed with a Shepty bone and a bit edge of ed edge highlighting and then just done some some blue glow effects um, I've just got the eyes, the blue eyes to do on this one, and that's it, that's all I'm going to do to them, that, they're just going to be statues, I've hacked them up a little bit, um, and sort of taken some some chunks out of shoulder pads, and added some scratches um, onto them as well, uh, so yeah, they, they, they don't take, take very long, so I'm pleased with those, so I've got a few more of those to do, um, but I'll sort of do those as and when, my daughter likes um, likes the models from Age of Sigma, um, and um, I might let her paint the, the undead ones because if they're going to be ghosts all she has to do is, is whack the x-ray flame on them. Um, again Leon T66 reminded me basically because he was uh, doing some farm animals and I forgot I built bought this pack from War Bases um, again at Salute just to be a little objective marker so just got some um, little little sheep I can't remember the type of rams or sheep but they were meant for dark age stuff so just putting those together see those that should hopefully just take a couple of minutes to to finish off um but the main thing i'm doing is obviously i showed you guys uh, a while back the napoleonics that i'd worked on so i'd done this test base of italians so i finally got around to just sticking together um enough for a battalion so I do 24 man battalions these are just on here with blue tack in a minute so I was just sort of dry dry fitting them um, but you know what a set it's just awesome so um, yeah drummer officer sapper um, I've chucked a uh, Voltiger on here because I didn't want to do the Eagle Guards so and then we've just got a um, normal fusilier there 
Um, and then instead of having a single base of grenadiers and a single base of um, uh, voltigers, I've just kind of added a front rank onto here. So guys at the back, fusiliers, um, NCO with a, a fanion, and, uh, and then we've got some of these really cool looking grenadiers at the front. Um, what it, loads of little extras in this peri box as well. So you've got like this extra sort of water tin um, on there. And then on this one's on the Voltigers, you've got the, the guys with the horn, um, which was cool. So I've added those onto the front. Um, and I've still got, after sticking these together, there's still 20 models left. So I can either uh, make them up as a sort of under strength unit and do them as a skirmishing unit, or I can just buy four more models and have a whole other battalion. So there we go. That will be a, a battalion of Italians. So I'll be starting work on those in um, in the very, very near future. And uh, next, I stuck together all the spares that I had from my Wars of the Roses. Not all of them, my my armoured ones, my, my foot knights. So we're going to be having the game of this at the end of the month. And I'll be filming it. Uh, for some kind of battle report. Um, speaking of battle reports, I don't know what you guys, what do people prefer? Do they prefer sort of, if you like, like live action so you can see the dice rolls and that? Or do you, is, do people just like a sort of a summary at the end of a turn? I don't know. I'll, I, can't, I haven't really decided what we're going to do yet, but we're going to give it a go. Um, so these are a mixture of the Footnight Sprues, the Mercenary Sprues, basically everything. So I've kind of taken the bodies and the heads and just to create, um, well, another another unit. Um, I also found someone who was selling a Footnight Sprue on eBay cheap, so that that'll be that'll be turning up. Um, so I can add a couple more guys. Um, and the reason, sort of like looking at this, was I purchased some more flags from Freezy Water Flat, uh, Fre ugh, Freezy Water Flags, because um, I real so the flags that I already had, uh, as you can see oh, here. Uh, these are the Yorkist standards, um, so we've got Edward, Richard of York, Lord Hastings, uh, who's the one I've used, and somewhere in there, I think covered up is uh, Richard, uh, but the, the flag in here is for when he's Rich, uh, Richard III, not when he's Duke of Gloucester. I've got some standards, and I just realised that I had the livery um, standard for uh, the Earl of Essex, which is this green and black one, and then I've got his personal coat of arms, so I went back on the website, and then I found using his index system on there um, which of these packs had his standard in it so these guys when I paint them up they're going to be uh, done in the colours of the Earl of Essex they'll be black and green so I'm going to do one unit of Foot Knights the Earl of Essex will be mixed in I'm not going to have him as a separate commander like I did with Lord Hastings because um, Lord Hastings was an overall commander of um, of Edward so I'm not going to do him like that he's just going to be in the front rank and you know that'll be just that unit is the Earl of Essex's unit. So I'll do one unit of Foot Knights and one unit of Billman. And I've got enough mercenaries left to sort of bulk out some of my pike units. Um, speaking of freezy water, if you if you go on that website, um, there's there's a countdown on there. I think he's closing the website down maybe near the end of the year. So I'm trying desperately to get everything I want off of there um, before it disappears. Um, but I picked up this which um, are standards and badges and livery colors of the walls of the roses um it's just it's just interesting um i like sort of books like this um so it goes through their mottos and then he's done uh, loads of research just on the different combatants their standards their mottos the different heraldry devices that they use um and it's, it's good for wargaming now while i said before i'm not too worried about being you know 100% historically accurate I still like to kind of go along along those lines and it, it just looks cool so um, yeah this was a nice little book to get hold of um, he's got loads on there um, dealing with different different battles um, so that's that's really where I am um, I've got a big terrain project which I've been working on but I will want to show that off when it's when it's completed um, just um, it's a bit messy <laughs> and I don't know if anyone's noticed um, but it's a little bit windy out at the minute <laughs> um, so because um, I'm using a lot of pigments uh, it's not really the weather <laughs> to be um, to be finishing it off so hopefully the wind will die down and speaking of the Gangs of Rome stuff I've just got this to stick together again I picked this up at Salute completely forgot about it 
Um, so just some Roman buildings under construction. I won't do anything fancy with these. I'll put them together, I'll spray them brown, I'll dry brush them, pick out the bricks, and that'll be that. Um, anyway, uh, again, sorry it's been so long since I last updated. Thank you for taking time to watch this and everyone who's commented or, or asked, I know a couple of you asked where, I, where I've been. Um, I, I am still here and I am still watching all your videos um, and I'm really enjoying them. So keep it up and I will, uh, I'll see you guys again soon. Cheers.